Welcome back. Um, so, I hope you all had a good Easter Easter break. Um, we're going to we left complex numbers behind. We're going to be moving on to a new chapter. That chapter is statistics. Um, let's stick it up there. Statistics. Statistics, and um, so that's going to carry on from where we covered statistics before. And the, the chapter we've already looked at within, within statistics was basically about different types of data. So you'll need to have those words to the fore of your mind again when we're doing this topic. Um, and you're going to get encounter some new words as well. Um, and the first new word you're going to come across is our new term. It's going to be measure of central tendency. Um, measure of central tendency. Now, your measure of central tendency man on the street does not use the term measure of central tendency, okay? Your average man on the street uses the term average. Okay, both of these things are effectively the same thing. Up until now, or in primary school, they probably were not the same thing. Certainly when I was in primary school, that was a really important word. Um, measure of central tendency, that's kind of a fancy way of saying average, okay? How close, how measure how close um, something is to the central, to the central most thing. Okay. There's a different, there's a different few ways of measuring central. Okay. So that's why we different types of averages. But I suppose to get you guys thinking about what you learned in primary school and that concrete understanding of average, I have an excellent um, idea. So I'll break that now and we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, so to kick off, we're going to take a look at something you would have covered in primary school. Um, and we're going to take a look at how primary school students find averages. So we have um, four eggs here in this carton. We have two eggs in this carton and we have three eggs in this carton. And I want to redistribute the eggs so there's the same amount of eggs in each carton. Now, I know this is kind of a trivial thing to do. Um, when there's three items and it's it's very clear that what the solution is going to be but let's just look at the process of the the, the the systematic way in which we can do this okay so I can join all the eggs together so I can add all the eggs together so I'm adding all the eggs together into the one place so we have the four eggs there one two three four five six seven eight Nine. So I'm now adding, I've now added all my eggs together and it turns out I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine eggs and I have to disperse those evenly among those three boxes. So what's got, or among those three cartons. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to come up to a procedure where I do this. I put one into there and I put the next one into there, 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 next one into there, and so on and so forth. So I've divided up the nine eggs into the three boxes. So we can say that the average, the average number of eggs in each box is three. So it, it was like this, yeah? But to make each box have the same number of eggs, we move that from there to there really, okay? So we, we redistributed the eggs evenly across all three cartons. When we did that in primary school, you would have called that finding the average. We're going to call it something slightly different in, in secondary school, but it's still the average, okay? It's still an average. Um, so let's just look at that process once more. We added them together on this towel. On this towel, we added them together, and then we divided them back up into their three groups, okay? So we added them together, and we divide them up. So when we did that, we were finding the average. And that's what you would have done in primary school. And so in the in the previous the, the example with the eggs, okay, we would have added them up. We would have divided by how many? So we would have had nine eggs. We divided it by how many boxes we had. We had three boxes. 
So that gave us an average number of eggs in each box, which was three. Okay. And in primary school, you guys would have called that the average number of eggs in each box. And it definitely is. It's definitely an average. Okay. It's just we can no longer say it's the average. Because in secondary school, average means something a little bit different. Okay. Average because it gets back to this idea of measure of central tendency. Okay. It's a little bit more complicated than we just having one average. In fact, we have three different averages. And this happens to be one of the averages. So when we add up and we divide it by how many, we're actually working out the mean. Okay. So when we do this system here of adding up and dividing by how many there are, we're finding the mean. Okay. So let's take a look at an example of this. If I gave you the numbers, let's say, um, 7, 3, 9, um, 2, and 4. I better go one more, sorry. Um, and 5. Okay, so I've given you those numbers. And I want to work out the average of those. Okay, sorry, I've used the wrong word there. I don't want to work out the average, because there's no such thing as the average anymore. There's now an average, and the average I want to work out is the mean. So I want to work out the mean of this data here. So first job is add them up. So we go 7 plus 3 plus 9 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5. It's a bit of a wonky plus there, isn't it? Um, okay, so that's going to be 10, 19, 21, 25, 30. So on the top I have 30. And how many terms do I have? So I've added them up. I have to divide it by how many? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to divide that by 6. So we have 30 divided by 6, which is equal to 5. So the mean, the mean of this data is 5. So the mean of this data is 5. And what that re really means is that if I took, let's say, 2 away from the 7 and I gave it to this 3, I'd have 5 and I'd have 5. And if I took 4 away from this 9 and I redistributed between these two guys here, it would average out that each one is going to have 5, okay? So when we do that process, we're finding the mean. Okay? Finding the mean we add them up, we divide it by how many there are. I'll stick a data set up on the board and you guys might work out the mean of it now for me. Um, okay, so that's a data set there. So it's 3296. Work out the mean of this data for me. So you can pause the video now and come and press play when you're done. I'll, I'll obviously work straight away at it. Okay, so I set you guys the challenge of finding the mean of this um, data set here. So to find the mean of this data set, we're going to add them up. We're going to divide it by how many there are. So let's take a look at that. We go 3 plus 2 plus 9 plus 6. We have to divide that by how many there are, and there are four of them. So that's going to be um, five, and nine is 14, and six is 20. So it's going to be 20 on the top, all over four, which is equal to five. So the mean of this data is five. Okay, and what that, what kind of getting back to redistributing the eggs, what's after happening here is, this 6, he gets turned into a 5, and that means he has 1 to give this 3 up here, so he need, maybe he makes that 3 into a 4. Okay, and then the 9, we maybe make him into an 8, and so he's reduced by 1 to 8, so he's after giving that to this 4 here, he becomes a 5. And then this 8 here, he's going to give away 3 to become a 5, 
and he's going to give it to that two to become a five. Okay, so it's when we're finding the mean, we're redistributing um, all of the values evenly across all the values. Okay, so the the mean value of this data is five. I don't really want you doing this approach. Okay, what I need you to be able to do is be able to add them up and divide it by how many there are. It's nice to have an understanding of what's going on, yeah? but don't, don't be too concerned if you are confused by what went on over here. The crucial thing is, if you're asked to find the mean, you add them up and you divide it by how many there are. So we've dealt with mean, we now know how to calculate the mean, right? We take the old primary school average, that's how we calculate the mean. We're now going to take a look at when the mean fails us, when the mean doesn't really work as a concept of average. We're going to have two more types of average that we have to look at. So we're going to get rid of this notion of there being an average. We're now going to have a concept of averages. Okay, so it's now plural. So there's now a number of averages that we can take, and the mean is just one of them. Let's take a look at when the mean fails us. And a really nice example of this would be take a look at a really bad maths class that I have. So let's take maybe one guy gets 30%, another guy might get 32%, another guy might get 33%, another guy might get, I don't know, 38%, and then one guy, really good guy, he does loads of study, and he gets 100%. And this is summer tests. And so Mr. Sullivan wants to know, so Mr. Healy, how are you getting on with, the, with this particular class? And I give Mr. Sullivan an average score of my class. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe cheat the system here. I'm going to give Mr. Sullivan the mean score. So I'm going to give Mr. Sullivan the mean score. Let's take a look at the mean score of this information here. So it's going to be 30. Plus 32, plus 33, plus 38, plus 100. So I've added them up. So to calculate the mean, I add them up and then I, yeah, divide it by how many there are. And there are one, two, three, four, five of them. So I add them up and I divide it by how many there are. So that's a calculator job. So let's put them in. So it's 30 plus 32, plus 33, plus 38, plus 100, equals 233. Check my figures, will you please? All over five. So this is looking good, because I because I know what's gonna happen here, because 200 would be 40, right? So it's 233 divided by five, which is 46.6%. 6 I'm pretty happy, I can tell Mr. Sullivan, well, the average score of my student was 46.6. Does that seem fair to you that, that we had these really kind of dodgy scores here, like, like one, two, three, four. Four of my students failed the test, but yet, if according to the mean, if I use that average, well then, the average student in the class should have passed. 46.6%, not a bad score really. So there's something weird going on here when we calculate the mean. Yeah, something really peculiar. And it's to do with um, this guy here. He's the problem. Okay, he's the problem. We call him an outlier. Okay, an outlier. Now there's a technical definition of outlier, but we don't need to know that at ordinary level. All we need to know is that an outlier is kind of far away from all of the other scores. So this outlier, okay, he pulls the mean towards him. So an average we wanted, we wanted to communicate that the class are not doing really well at all. But because there was one guy who got 100%, but he pulled the average, he pulled the mean up for everyone. Okay, and that's called an outlier. So that 
guy there, he's an outlier. So we need a system of finding the average, of finding an average, that counteracts outlier. Counteracts the, the, the power or the pulling force of the outliers. So outliers pull the mean towards them. And that average is called a median. So if you have an outlier in your data, you're probably better off taking the median as your average. Okay, so that's what the median is used for. It's used to, um, to, to eliminate the power of outliers. Okay, now, I'm gonna clear the board and do something that I will probably um, regret doing. So, as you might be aware, I am not really an artist. I'm going to leave that data up, actually. And I might just calculate the mean as 46.6. So the, the mean was 46.6%. Now, so I'll leave that information up there, and I will do something now that... Um, I will regret doing, okay? So, um, let's see what happens. What colours do I have? I have an old red. Red would be good for this. I do. Okay. So, let's draw ourselves a map. Colour in this sea blue. Okay, so maybe the land will colour in red. So, oh, um, you probably don't know what I'm after drawing there, okay? What I wanted to draw was Italy, Greece, Spain, Africa, um, sorry, I gave everyone else a country. My geography is shocking. Um, I think Morocco is over here somewhere. Egypt is down here. I don't know what's in there. Is Tunisia a country? I think Tunisia might be there somewhere. Um, okay, so, so basically, in between these two continents, there's this sea, right? And this sea is surrounded by land. Do you know what we call this sea? Yeah, very good. So this is the Mediterranean Sea. Now, if I, now if you thought my, if you thought my drawing was bad, my spelling is even worse. Medi. Okay, so that's M-E-D-I-T-E-R-A-N-E-A, -E -E I think that's it, okay? I don't really care too much about from here on, okay, with regards to spelling. The key things that I need to look at are Medi and Terra. Okay, Terra, Terra, that means land, as in Tiroliot and geography. The science of the land, geography, tiro liot, um, terra firma, on, on solid land. Um, yeah, okay, now, medi. What does medi mean? Well, where is this sea in relation to all of this land? Okay, so this sea is right in the middle of all of this land. 
So medi means middle. Middle of land. Okay, so the Mediterranean is really the sea that's in the middle of all the land. Mediterra. Okay, middle of the land. And we see this Medi up here and Medi up here. Okay, we, um, the, the media, <clears throat> the media are the things in between you and the event that's happening. So if a car crash happens outside, it will be reported to you via the media. They're in between you and the event that's after happening. <coughs> so that's what's meant by medi, is the middle, okay? So the median, the median is the middle value. Averages now. So median is the middle value. And let's take a look at how the median will counteract the effect of the outliers. So if I go back to my original data set, my really um, poor um, class, or poor performing class, I should say. So what do we have here? Well, we have a 30, he's the smallest, and the next smallest is 32, and the next smallest is 33, next smallest is 38, and the biggest was 100. So I've listed them in order, and the middle one, the median, I get to the median by ticking off. I tick off the smallest one with the biggest one. I tick off the next smallest one with the next biggest one until I'm left with one in the middle. And that guy there is the median. Okay? So that's, um, that's what median is. It's the middle term. Now, if I gave that score to Mr. Sullivan, if I said the median is 33%. That would be a that would be a fairer score, right? That, that should really be the score that I that kind of reflects the class. Yeah. So that's why we use the median. It it it, it eliminates the pulling force of the outliers. Okay, so I'll clear my board, I'll put up another example, and then I'll get you to do an example, or an exercise, sorry. Right, um, we're asked to find the median of this data here, so 5, 7, 11, 13, 19, 22, 24, 27, 27, find the median of it. Our system that we saw before was we go ticking. So we tick this guy here off, with this guy, we take the next smallest off, the next biggest. Now, very, very important, guys, that you do top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Do not do top, bottom, bottom, top, top, okay? Take them off in pairs and take the first, the top one off each time, okay? Um, so we then take this guy here off with this guy, and we then take this guy here off with this guy. And that leaves us with 19 in the middle. So 19 is the median. Okay, so that's how we calculate the median. Um, that's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, nice system. Um, there's a problem with it though. Spot the problem? So I gave, I've given you, I think, the scores that we had over here. I think there was five scores. And there's 
two, four, six, eight. There's nine of these. So both of those were odd numbers. What if I gave you an even sized data set? If I gave you five, seven, 11, 13, 19, 22, 24, and 27. What about if I gave you that data set? And I said, find the median. Well, find the median, we know what we do. We tick off the top one, and the bottom one, and we go back up the top. Oh, and if I tick both of these guys here off, I tick both of them off, I'll be left with nothing. So that's a problem. And that always happens when we have an even number of, um, of data. So I need a system to deal with this, okay? Let's go back to what median actually means. It means the middle value. So median means the middle value. So really what I'm looking for is the value that's in between 13 and 19. So I'm looking for the value that's halfway between 13 and 19. Now, because these numbers are quite small, we might be able to think about this. So let's think about this. And if we think about it hard enough, we should be able to get the answer. So what's halfway between 13 and 19? Well, um, what's halfway between 13 and 19? Well, there's six in between these two. And half of six is three. So if we add three onto 13, that will give us, yeah, 16. Okay, so you can, if you think about this kind of hard enough and in, in depth enough, you'll be able to get the median. But what if I gave you this data set here, um, 3, um, 101, uh, 6, 7, 9, 5, no, 6, 8, 3, um, 1, 9, 5, 4, 2, 6, 9, 3, and 2, 4, 6, um, 3,000 and 10,001. If I gave you that data set there and I asked you to find the median, well, you'd have to think about what's the middle between these two numbers here. And that's, that's a problem, yeah? It, it, it'd be, be very hard to just think about that. So we need a system of being able to find the middle of two numbers. Um, it's like we're going to kind of distribute both of these values into, into two different boxes. Yeah. So it's like we're kind of averaging them out. Because the, from 19 to 16, there's 3. And the, that, that 3 is given to this 13 here to turn them both into 16. Where have we seen that before? Remember with the eggs, when we were redistributing the eggs? So when we want that process of kind of distributing them to equal numbers, well, think of what we do there. We just add them up. We divide it by how many there are. So we have a 13 and a 19. So we go 13, 13 plus 19 all over 2, which is equal to 16. Yeah? Everyone okay with that? So to find the middle of two numbers, we add them together, we divide it by two. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so to find the middle of two numbers, we add them together and divide it by two. So the median of this list, we go ticking, so we tick that guy off with that guy, that guy off with that guy, that guy off with that wire. If we continue ticking, we'll get rid of that guy and that guy, and we'll be left with nothing. So we stop there, and we're left with two in the middle. So to find the middle of those two, when well, we add them together, we go 6, 8, 3, plus 1, 9, 5, 4, and that gives us 7, and 3, and 16, that gives us 2, 6, 3, 7. We divide that by 2, which gives us what? Um, whatever that gives us. Um, <laughs> um, it's going to be a 3.5 at the end anyway, is it? Um, Two in the back goes once, two in the back goes three. Two into three goes once and one over. Two into 17 goes eight times. Yeah, so I think that's the answer. Check my arithmetic there, okay? But crucially, to find the middle of these two numbers, we add them together and we divide it by two. Okay, let's think a list up for you guys to have a go at. So can you guys calculate the median of of that data set there. So it's 3, 3, 3, 3, 12, 13, 19, 27, 36, 43. So work out the median of that data set now. So pause the video and come back to me. Okay, so you guys have, um, you've, you've worked out the median of this list here, hopefully. So let's just check your answer. Hopefully you did this. You ticked off the top one with the bottom one, the next one, with the next one, the next one, with the next one, the next one, with the next one. Oh, if we take both of these off, we'll be left with nothing. So I'm gonna have to add the both of those together and divide by two. So it's gonna be 12 plus 13 all over two, which is equal to, the median will be 12 and a half. So the median of this data set is 12.5, the middle value. Right, so that's two of our averages dealt with. So let's take a look at the next average, um, and the last average in fact. So we're nearly there, we nearly have three averages covered. Um, and it arises when we have something along this line here. So let's say if I did a survey and I asked people how they came to school, so some people might say car, um, car, car, bike, uh, bus, walk, 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 walk. walk, bike. Okay, so they're the, the ways that people come into school or something like that, okay? So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six people walk into school, whereas only one person gets the bus into school. Two people bike into school, and four people get the car into school. Now, that's, that's pretty good, but if I asked you to find the average way in which people come to school, we couldn't really use either of our two averages already. We couldn't really work out the mean. We couldn't really add them up. We couldn't really add a car onto car. What'd you get if you added a car onto a car? Um, I don't know. So we can't add them up. The median 
Well, to find the median, we need to be able to put them in order. Does it make sense for cars to come before bikes? Not really. So, both of these averages here won't really work for us. So we can't. But yet it would be nice to know what the average way of getting into school is. So, we introduce a new average called mode. And mode is a really, really nice way of finding an average. Because mode is simply the most common. So mode means most common. So what's the most common form of transporting to school in the morning? It's going to be walk, right? So the the, the average, the average student walks into school. The mode is walk. The most common way of getting into school is walking. Now, that's, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, so we, we need some way of working out an average when we don't have numerical data. What type of data do we have here? It's not numerical. So it must be what? Yeah, it's going to be categorical data. Because these are kind of words, right? They're not numbers. So it's categorical data. So when we have categorical data, we can sometimes work out the mode, which is an average of categorical data. Um, we can obviously also use the mode on numerical data. Let's draw up a data set. data set there, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5, 7, 6, 9, 2, and 11. We have data, um, and we want to find the mode of that data set. Well, what's the mode? Yeah, so the mode is 2, yeah, quite, because it's the most common. So it's a really nice average to be able to, to work out. You just have to kind of work out how frequently each, um, each time um, uh, an entry occurs. So that's what mode is. Um, but looking at this data set, it's not really a very good average, is it? Is the average of that data, is it really two? I don't think so. So it's an easy average to calculate, but sometimes it's not a good average to take. But when with numerical data, would be, would it be a, a good time to use the mode? Well, there's a really nice example that I like using. And what's the what's the average number of arms that a human has? So your average human, what's the average number of arms that a human has? So we would want the average number of arms a human has to be two. Now, if I added up all the single arms in the world belonging to humans, and I divided it by the population of the world, I wouldn't get two, right? So the mean would not work in that case. Because because of war and disease, people have lost arms. So, now some people might be born with three arms, but there's probably an awful lot of more people who have lost arms, or who are born with one arm. So we're gonna have slightly less than two as being the mean number of arms. So in that case, it makes sense for us to talk about the mode number of arms being two. So the average, Getting back to this word up here, the average number of arms for a human is two. We know that that's, we should just accept that as being true. 
but yet we cannot use this to get that average. We would have to use the mode. Okay? So that's what, that's really the strength of the mode, okay? It's used when we have categorical data, and it's used when we have um, an answer that kind of is very, very prevalent in society. Or not in society, just an answer that's very, very prevalent. Well, then we can use the mode on numerical data as well. Now, obviously, for your leading cert, they could ask you to find the mode of a data set like that. Yeah, because you, they just need you to know that mode means most common. So, gents, that's the, um, that's the theory for today. Um, I'm going to send you some homework now. I have it written just behind the camera, so it's page 210. Page 210 to page 212, and it's question um, 1, 2, 10, 17, and 19. Okay, so question 1, question 2, question 10, question 17, question 19 on page 210 and page 212. Sorry, page 210, 2, 2. So from page 210 to page 212. So it's about mean, mode, and median. Um, that's, that's the order I, I, I learned them in, mean, mode, median. So the three M's, mean, mode, median. Um, yep, so have a go at those tonight. And I will go through them again with you on Wednesday. Um, Okay, so I'll see you again on Wednesday. Stay safe.